morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today we are back with a series that we haven't done for a little while, the complete history of the Pokemon trading card game, a series where I basically look back at every set we've ever had in the Pokemon TCG and tell you everything you need to know. Now, this series did go away for a little while because these videos take ages to make and weren't as popular as a lot of other videos I make. But since it's a World Championships, I've gone and made three in advance. There's one this week and next week and the week after. And if they go well enough, you have my word, I will continue this... Well, I'll continue the series. We'll carry on from where we were before. We'll make it a thing again. So... Do make sure you share it around, tell your friends, make sure you watch them, etc. So we can keep these rolling. So, Breakpoint. Breakpoint was a very, very good set. It was released in Japanese on December the 11th, 2015. Rage of the Broken Heavens, according to Bulbapedia. What a name. We got it on February the 3rd, 2016. Breakpoint, putting it out there, not as cool a name as... Rage of the Broken Heavens. Maybe that's just me. Now, here we had a bunch of new EXs that came along with Full Arts in the set. So, we had ourselves Gyarados EX, which was fun, but not particularly special. And Mega Gyarados EX, which was fun, but not particularly special. Cool card, never really came around. Manaphy EX, however, was a very good card. Now, Mineral Pump healing your bench could actually work against spread decks like Trevenant. More on that in a moment. But also the ability Aqua Tube just gave your Pokemon with water energy attached no retreat. This was a very cool one. We had ourselves an Espeon, which was very cool because Miraculous Shine let you devolve your opponent's Pokemon. And that could lead to some KOs if there was already some damage on there. We had the second Darkrai EX. Dark Pulse doing 20 damage plus 20 more for each Darkness Energy attached to all of your Pokemon was extremely cool. We had Scizory X, which was alright. I mean, to be fair, 2 Energy, 110 if it became active was pretty cool. And Mega Scizory X, 2 Energy, 120, discard a Special Energy or Stadium. This was actually a cool card that did see a bunch of play. We then saw ourselves a Ho-Oh EX, and it's Ho-Oh. It was awkward, doesn't matter, it was a very cool card nonetheless. Now we also did have Embor and Togekiss EX, neither of which incidentally were particularly good, but these didn't get full arts because they were released in their own Embor vs Togekiss EX deck over in Japan, so we see this all the time. Because the full arts didn't exist in Japan, we didn't end up getting the full arts over here. I'm sorry. And there was actually one other example we can look at here, because there was a Palkia in the set. Not particularly good, not particularly memorable, I'm sorry. But this was another one, it was actually released in the Golduck Break and Palkia EX combo deck over in Japan. So again, there's no full art version of Palkia, because no full art version exists. Although look how cool the packaging is for this. There were a bunch of new breaks in the set as well. We had Golduck that I was convinced was going to be good because they let you move your basic energy around the field as you wanted. It never was. There was Raticate Break, which let you put your opponent down to 10 HP remaining. That was actually pretty gosh darn good. Though I don't really know why we're going out of order if I'm honest with you. We had Luxray Break, which unfortunately was never particularly exciting. But then we had a couple of phenomenal ones. Greninja let you discard water energy from your hand to drop six damage counts on one of your opponent's Pokemon. And yeah, it's an evolution of a stage two. It's like a stage three. But as we'll get to in a minute, it was phenomenal. And Trevenant let you put three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. Which was, again, pretty phenomenal. Although that's where Manaphy came in. Some of these breaks were really good. In terms of full art supporters, the only one we got in the set was Skylar. It was a very popular card. In terms of gold cards, the only one we got was Gyarados. But you've got Gyarados there with Manaphy and Greninja. This is another one of those where the artwork is just absolutely stunning. It's one of those cards which is going to be ridiculous at some point. It's already quite expensive. Now, the most expensive card in the set is still Skylar at $40, but the gold Gyarados is very, very close. 
The pre-release promo was an alternate art of Trevenant. We'll get to in a minute. Trevenant and Greninja are very much themes when we're talking about Breakpoint. And then we did have a couple of theme decks, as we generally tend to do. Bit rude if we don't have theme decks. And here we had Wave Slasher and Electric Eye. Now, Wave Slasher was built around Greninja, and it actually did have two Greninja, one hollow, one non-hollow. And as we'll get to in a minute, the Greninja was good. But then it also had a couple of Frogadier and Free Froki. This is one of the best theme decks we've ever had, purely because it had a whole bunch of stuff you need for a genuine phenomenal meta deck. Fun fact, the Hollow, the Crack Dice Hollow, was exclusive to this deck. Shout out to Bulbapedia for providing us with that and some of the other information. We then did have non-hollow rares of Golduck, Lilligant, and Slowking, and the non-hollow Slowking was exclusive. It was a hollow in the set. Now, Electric Eye was not quite so exciting, unfortunately. You got yourself a hollow and a non-hollow Luxray. The hollow was exclusive, but Luxray just wasn't that great. And then we had non-hollow rares of Zeb Striker, and Hypno, and Meowstic. All non-hollow in the set, none of them exclusive. Greninja wins here, by a mile, but that's just because Greninja was like a full-on great deck. Now, in terms of the best cards in the deck, let's start with Greninja. This was a bit of a Greninja set. Because the Greninja in the set had the absolutely phenomenal attack, Shadow Stitching. 40 damage and it turned off your opponent's abilities. It was ability lock. It was great. But then we also had Greninja Break that let you discard water energy from your hand to drop six damage counters. And not for nothing, but don't forget, we also had the Greninja from X and Y that let you discard a water energy from your hand and drop three damage counters. And just to be clear about the ruling from the time, they did have to be different energy. So you had to discard a different energy for Greninja and Greninja Break, even though if you break evolved from XY Greninja, you would have both those abilities on the same Pokemon. You could not discard one energy to activate both abilities. That would be a little bit too good. But then we also had the Frogadier with water duplicates that let you search your deck for free Frogadier and bench them. So hopefully turn two, you get Frogadier out, and then that gets your other free Frogadier, and then you evolve up in, into your Greninja and your Break and your Ability Lock while dropping damage counters. It was a slow deck, and at times it could brick hard, but when it didn't, it was one of the best decks at the time. And we might as well go on and talk about Trevenant while we're here as well. Now, once again, we had a new Trevenant in this particular set. Very nice ability that increased the cost of your opponent's basic Pokemon's attacks by one energy. But again, we also had an old Trevenant, which weirdly enough was also from X and Y. Yeah, apparently this was a set where they took Pokemon from X and Y and made them busted. Because remember that Trevenant had Forest Curse, which was Item Lock, which was a bit busted. Then, of course, you had Trevenant Break that could drop three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. And either you're increasing their attack cost or you're blocking items. Either way, you've slowed them down and dropped damage. Then, of course, you had the new Phantom in this set, which had Ascension, which let you evolve up. So essentially, if you go first... Then on turn two, you've got Trevenant, you're off and rolling, your opponent's item locked. If you go second, you just get Phantom and Ascend turn one. But then your opponent goes into their turn with Trevenant in the active already item locking them. Ascension Phantom was absolutely huge. Also huge in this set was Garboda. It was back with that Garbotoxin ability, which meant that when it had a tool attached, it turned off abilities. This made its way into many, many, many decks because it turned off abilities and was great. Now, there were some phenomenal tools in this set. Bursting Balloon was great. Now, it only lasted for a single turn, but if you damage a Pokemon it was attached to, you take six damage counters. That was pretty gosh darn ridiculous. Saw play in a whole bunch of decks. Fighting Fury Belt gave basic Pokemon an extra 40 HP and let them do an extra 10 damage. Big Basics absolutely loved it. Now, Manaphy was one I mentioned earlier. This was a phenomenal card. We liked the attack with the healing. It could be useful sometimes, but we adored the ability to give us free retreat. It was Redonk. 
Darkrai was back. As I mentioned earlier, it had that attack that let you just deal damage based on the number of darkness energy attached to all of your Pokemon. But we would later on get a bunch of tricks which made this way better. Now, Espeon EX was good for devolving, and generally what you would do is you would play a deck that put a bunch of damage around the field, and then you would bring up Espeon, you would devolve them all, and although there wasn't enough damage to KO the evolved forms, once you got rid of the top evolution, took them down a stage, they would then all get KO'd. Espeon was a really, really good game ender. Now, Raticate Break was a bit of a gimmick. It was never great, I'll be honest with you, but Super Fang would just take your opponent down to, well, 10 HP. So you would just get poison on there, and then all of a sudden they get KO'd and you KO literally anything. It was a very, very cool card. Now, Garchomp is one that I personally have a huge, huge amount of love for. I actually took this Garchomp, I bubbled top 32 at a, at a pretty big regional in the UK with this, because Turbo Assault, 60 damage, attached energy from your discard part of one of your Pokemon, and then you basically would just use Bite Off every single turn to do 160 to Pokemon EXs. Except, remember at the time, we had a whole bunch of stuff like, I don't know, Strong Energy, for instance, which let you do extra damage. And yeah, you, you could KO EXs pretty easily. Sure, it was a stage two, but... Oh, as a side note, Garchomp could also attach Strong Energy from the discard with Turbo Assault, which was kind of a little bit busted. I will admit this was more for me than other people. And we should give a quick shout out to Slow King here. It had a nice ability that let you flip a coin, and if heads, you moved an energy from your opponent's active to one of his or her bench. It was used in some decks just to annoy them and move some energy around. Now, Delinquent, moving on to trainer cards properly, was a supporter that saw a whole bunch of play, discard a stadium in play, and then your opponent discards three cards from their hand. The goal here was to try and catch your opponent with three or fewer cards in hand, and then you put them down to a zero card hand, lock them out of the game, and chuckle nicely. Now, Max Elixir was also a very nice card. Look at the top six cards of your deck, attach a basic energy you find there to a basic Pokemon on your bench. And it had to be a basic energy, basic Pokemon on the bench. I get it. Trust me, bunch of decks played this and absolutely loved it. Puzzle of Time was a card so good it literally ended up getting banned. Now, it was one of those ones where you can actually play two at the same time. Now, if you played one, you look at the top three cards of your deck, put them back in any order, not particularly good. If you played two, you got any two cards from your discard pile back into your hand. And essentially what really broke this card was using it with Sableye, it's banned and expanded incidentally, that you could then basically just recover two puzzle of time every turn. And then get any two cards back. So Sableye got two item cards. But they would be Puzzle of Time. Which could get you any two cards. And yeah. It got a little bit silly. Reverse Valley was one of those cool double sided stadiums. Which was very very nice. One side said that Metal Pokemon had damage reduced by 10. And the other side said that Darkness Pokemon did 10 more damage. Generally, this was played in Darkness decks to do the extra damage. That's where it saw by far the most play. And then we had Splash Energy. It's a special water energy. If the water Pokemon it's attached to gets knocked out by damage, i.e. not damage counters or poison or stuff like that, you put it back into your hand. Really good in Greninja decks because you'd get every part of the Greninja line back ready to start evolving up and doing your thing. Now, not only were there a lot of good cards in Breakpoint, but a lot of good decks came around because of Breakpoint. Greninja Break got second place at the World Championships in 2016, and this was a very simple kind of deck. Frogadier got your frogs out. You then had the Greninja with Shadow Stitching to lock abilities, although it also had the attack that did the most damage. You had the X and Y Greninja and Greninja Break, which dropped damage counters. And then you'd basically sit there, you would ability lock your opponent for pretty much the entire game while dropping damage counters and wrecking their setup. Prone to bricking wasn't always the most consistent deck and it could be a bit slow, but when it got going, you basically just beat almost everything. 
And it is fun to note this was actually played with the promo Jirachi. And it's always nice to be able to give a shout out to playable promos. And this was the one that had Stardust, single energy, 10 damage, discard a special energy. If you, from your opponent's Pokemon, they're active. And if you do, it, it's, it's got immunity for a turn. So basically, you could use this, get a turn of immunity, and that would give you like an extra turn of dropping damage counters where your opponent couldn't really do very much to you. And it was an awful lot of fun. Trevenant Break was also an absolutely top deck. It won Italian Nationals in 2016. That was a tournament I was actually lucky enough to cast. German and Italian Nationals were the first tournaments I ever casted as an official Pokemon TCG caster for the Pokemon Company. So you better believe talking about these decks that did well at those tournaments. Oh, the nostalgia is strong in this video. So I've already mentioned both the Trevenant and the Trevenant Break. You block your opponent from doing very much while spreading damage counters. Now, the Phantom with Ascension was absolutely huge here, as was the card Dimension Valley. Now, this was genuinely huge here, because that was the one that reduced the cost of Psychic Pokemon by one colorless energy, which meant Silent Fear, Trevenant Breaks attack, was a single energy attack. Yeah. That was kind of ridiculous. Being able to do that for one energy was absolutely busted. This was also incidentally a deck that loved playing Bursting Balloon. You're spending damage around anyway. Might as well use some Bursting Balloon. Now, Seismitoad Manaphy was a weird deck that came around and actually won German Nationals. So both the first two tournaments I casted won by Breakpoint decks. And this was one where you've got Seismitoad obviously doing its thing, item locking. We've talked about Seismitoad. You've then got Manaphy, which gives free retreat, but also gives you a really good answer against Trevenant. You've then got Rough Seas, which was really good for, again, extra healing. And this was a really good deck for healing. Fighting Fury Belt, as I mentioned, you whack it on a Seismitoad, you do more damage while having more HP. This was one of those decks that used Max Elixir, because you wanted extra energy. And one thing that was actually really cool here, this was one of the Seismitoad saw a huge amount of play in a whole bunch of decks. But this was one of the few that actually played water energy. So you could legitimately use Grenade Hammer. You just wanted to make sure you hit one or two Max Elixir fairly early. And then it also played Articuno. Now this was a really cool ancient trait Articuno that took an extra prize when it took a KO. Now, it was free energy, 20 plus 40 for each heads from flipping free coins. But if you get a kill with this and take an extra prize, it was absolutely busted. Now, Darkrai Giratina is a weird kind of deck, but it did see a bunch of play and it got as far as top four at the US National Championships. Obviously, you had the Darkrai we mentioned earlier, and then you had Giratina EX, which was a great card that saw play in a whole bunch of decks. Giratina EX was the one whereby you prevented all effective attacks, including damage from Mega Pokemon, and then 100 damage, your opponent can't play any tools, special energy, or stadium cards. And in order to use Giratina, you would then use Double Dragon Energy, which was a double energy, but remember that counted as any kind of energy, so it would count as Darkness Energy to let you do more damage with Darkrai EX. See how that worked? Uh, incidentally, this was another deck that used Max Elixir, because you wanted to get as much energy on the field as fast as you possibly could. It also played Latias EX that prevented all effective attacks, including damage from Pokemon with abilities. So basically, if you came across a deck that all had abilities, I'm looking at you, Greninja, yeah, this would be um pretty gosh darned awesome. And then free energy, 70 damage, goes through anything. It's nice to have an attack that can go through anything. That's pretty cool. Now, I mentioned Garchomp earlier. This was very much a me thing, although I did once play a mirror match weirdly with this deck. Don't worry, I did win. And it was very much built around Garchomp, attacking with strong energy and recovering strong energy. But we also had the really, really awesome Horlucha. That was the one that had free retreat, and then you could do 60 damage for a single energy, but only against a Pokemon EX. We would use Focus Sash in this particular deck. That's the one whereby if your fighting Pokemon had full HP, it doesn't get knocked out in one hit. It goes down to 10 HP remaining. Basically meant that your opponent couldn't one hit KO Garchomp 
So you get at least two attacks with it. That's kind of awesome. And then, obviously, like all fighting decks at the time, Corinna was just absolutely redonkulous because Corinna let you go and get yourself an item card and a fighting Pokemon. So, obviously, you would go for Rare Candy and your Garchomp, in unless you already had one of the pieces. And then, yeah, from there, you you're kind of golden, ladies and gentlemen. It was kind of cool. And I suppose I have to give a shout out to Mega Sizzle. Now, the lovely Luke Kirkham and Alex Dow did play this too. They came 6th and 7th at Liverpool Regionals with this deck. And basically, it was just straightforward Mega Sizzle, but using cards like Silent Lab and Red Card for Disruption. So Red Card would put them down to a 4-card hand. Anytime you thought they had a decent hand, in comes Red Card. And then Silent Lab would turn off their abilities... And basically, you lock them out of special energy, lock them out of abilities, and just sit there doing decent damage. Didn't look good. Ended up being really good. Breakpoint was a phenomenal set. And sure, really good Ninja and Trevenant were dominating, but I just named four legitimate great top-tier decks from this particular set. And then two others, which were kind of borderline, but they saw a bit of success as well. This was a great deck. Now, like I've said, we, we stopped this series for a little bit of a while because these videos took ages. We are now back. And I'll tell you what, if you guys keep watching, I'm going to keep making them. Because as much as these videos do take ages to make, and they really do take like three times as long as a regular video, they are kind of fun. So as always, tell me what you think about this. Tell me your memories of Breakpoint. And if you weren't playing when Breakpoint was out, tell me your opinion seeing it for the first time now. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon, card games, Pokemon card games, all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely Trevs99, who's been a supporter of ours for a while now and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for all the support and for being a very lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.